Bean Sports ekranlarına hoş geldiniz. Bugün iki tane süper konuğumuz var. Hemen yarımda gördüğünüz gibi e, Vasilya Misic ve Shane Larkin, Andalu Efes'i Euroleague şampiyonu ulaştıran bu ikiliyle bugün beraberiz. Çok özel e, bir yayın olacak hem bizim için basketbol severler için hem de Kırkus benim için. Çünkü gerçekten 3 e, sezondur muazzam oynayan Avrupa'nın en iyi ikilisi diyebileceğimiz iki oyuncuyla beraberiz. Hemen e, sohbetimize başlayalım. So guys, thank you very much for coming here with us. I know it was a very busy week, but first of all, let me congratulate you because it was a very special uh, achievement for me because we were always around you guys, uh, interviewing you, uh, talking about many subjects. And then in the end, the story that you guys uh, begin from the three years ago, now we finished it. So first of all, how is it like to be the uh, champion of the Europe? You are older. It uh, feels good. Um, like you said, it's been a long journey from the first day we all got together here a couple <laughs> years ago. Um, so for it to co all come full circle from being last place, second place, season canceled to now reaching that ultimate goal that we've been chasing for so long feels good. And it feels good that we did it all together with the people that it started with. So very good feeling. Yeah. How are you feeling, Vasa? I would agree with him. Uh, it was a pretty long journey, but uh, from this perspective, it seems like it was so fast. So, very, very happy for everything, uh, for every member of our team. And uh, it, it's, it's way better to, to win this way than maybe with Real Madrid, Barcelona or, or CSKA, who are probably the teams that last 10 years are almost every time of final four so yeah. it's good feeling But let's rewind a little bit to the uh, first meeting that you guys uh, had here maybe or in the mertar uh, but uh, three years from now the team got together new nine new players T uh, the team was the last uh, position in the euroleague uh, a, a, ago, a year ago uh, so uh, Do you remember the first day that you guys meet, talk, the first meeting? Uh, How was it? I, I remember because I came late <laughs> to, to, to the team. Um, I don't know why. Something <laughs> was going on, obviously. And uh, I came into the military gym. Yeah. And then they were all already practicing. Then I came and I just met everybody individually. I was out for like another week or something before I started practicing. But I remember that was the first day that we kind of met each other and I started the first time I saw him playing live in person. First time I saw a lot of the guys in person. I've actually watched them on TV and stuff, but that was the first time I saw him in person. So I, I remember that day pretty well. How do you remember, Vasa? For me, that summer was very interesting because uh, that was the first uh, first big decision in my life uh, that I made on my own, uh, signing for FS. Because uh, as you mentioned, many things which was very famous about FS, especially here that I finished uh, with Jagiris. And all that summer I was following, because I was one of the first who signed uh, in FS, I was following who will go, who will, they're going to sign. So when I saw first Philbeck and I was okay, I mean, because I know him a little bit, then I saw they signed him. So I was expecting somebody special because uh, Uh, I never, I watch him in, uh, I follow him in uh, Basconia, but I never saw him alive, alive. And then when I came here, for me, the first impression was that we, we have so many new players. Like mm -hmm. was nine new players. Nine new players, completely new situation for me, especially the, the, the feeling that I brought from Serbia, it was not so good because people in Serbia, they follow a lot of basketball. Mm -hmm. And they really doubt about my signing here, you know, because mm. they were they were they were not expecting uh, such a good uh, year that we had in our first season, because uh, everybody told me, oh, it's new team, so many, so many players you have to contribute. My role was not supposed to be so good. Then also about coach, you came from Sharas, whether going to be good or not. But I really put that everything on the sign. And my first impression, I said, was that. We we click somehow in these first days faster than I expected. Mm. 
that's, a, that's very huge because you know when we bought you on the court you were splitting your minutes because you were both the PG of the team yeah. uh, point guards of the team so whenever you play together something became to click but I remember an Olympiakos game right here in the February of uh, 2019 uh, There is a moment that you play with one on one with Bezenkov uh, in the end, end of the third quarter. Do you remember? He, he passed the ball to you and you make a shot and then you smile at each other. And that was something like from outsiders like us. That, that's the moment that, that these two guys are gelling together on the court. This is the feeling that we got from the outside. But when do you feel that gel together moments on the court or off the, off the court maybe? Uh, I think it's just, I can't remember a specific moment where mm -hmm. it happens. I think it just built over time. Mm -hmm. uh, like you said, we had nine new players. Obviously, we never played with each other before. So I think it was just a process of figuring out how we could both coexist and be the best uh, versions of ourselves on the court. Um, so I don't think there was one specific moment or one specific game. I just think, you know, it took time to kind of understand what he did, what was best for him on the court to figure out what I could do best to help him, to help myself, to help the team. So I think just over time, playing together, being together on the court, off the court, understanding each other's personalities, characteristics, positives, flaws, like I think all of us together just kind of grew and gelled together, but specifically me and him because we have the ball most of the time. Yeah. Um, I think it just was a, a process of, of learning it, learning it. And we obviously, he's very talented. I'm talented, we have a bunch of talented guys. So when you put talented people together, that have, you know, one main goal of winning together, no matter who is doing whatever, that makes you really dangerous. And I think that's just kind of how it built, built over time. Yeah. Awesome. I have a little bit different perspective because uh, when I signed here, I knew that there will be somebody in front of me that was already said from coach mm. when we talk. And then I was like, one, two. Mm -hmm. uh, position in, in Jagiri. So also I knew that in two position will be somebody. But uh, I also saw some chance there because I knew that he's going to be late mm -hmm. uh, for the preparation. And I knew that he he will maybe wait a little bit because he was definitely the biggest star mm -hmm. of the team when he signed. And, uh, and he was the only one who really had, especially that moment, F is kind of make a rebuilding of the team who got that in the beginning big credits mm -hmm. from all of us. Maybe Krono with season before mm -hmm. uh, with Ataman, but from newcomers he was the only one. So, but that that's something that I was waiting for to see what this what he can really give for that what he got. Like, cause I I didn't know a lot about him. And then in Bormio, I remember we had some practice. He was not moving at all, like, he you know, <laughs> don't want to move. But we had some drill, some trees, shooting trees. And every time I was very hungry, you know, I was practicing hard, I was doing my best. And every time we come to the last shot, he makes. <laughs> Before, he doesn't care, but the most important, he makes. And then I asked Rodi, Bobois, what this guy is doing for that big contract? <laughs> If he doesn't want to move or whatever, like he's just walking on the court. Yeah. He said he's so fast. I said he cannot move. <laughs> <laughs> or he don't want, he doesn't want. <laughs> no, he said just give him some time. So, of course that I was trying to get my chance because I, I was fighting, everybody fights here for position. So I was trying to get my chance to come in first five because he was supposed to be there. But at the same time, I always, was ready for him to enter come, uh, enter to the starting five to play together to see what's what's going on with mm -hmm. him. And then it was very funny situation. First round of Turkish league, mm -hmm. they put him they put him instead of me for that first game. Mm -hmm. and he killed. <laughs> and then suddenly they put me back because we play I think Bayern Munich mm -hmm. first Euroleague round. I mean I speak these details because for him this is like a regular thing to happen and he knows many things also from his side to say, but for me it was a long story because mm -hmm. I was really happy to, to, to beat myself and my ego to play with him. Because mm -hmm. when I signed here, he was my rival, you know, yeah. logically, as you said, we, are, we were both playing. And then, as I said, I was always waiting for that moment to see what he's capable of. 
and then I, I think that was some some games before before Barca, and sometimes we we had a chance to play together. Most of the time we split on the on the practice against each mm -hmm. other, and then one time coach put us together. Suddenly I felt so free, like mm -hmm. I breathe again. Because with Rodi it's good, but Rodi has some momentum that sometimes his body language he doesn't want to play. He wants this is strange, but now we understand everybody. At that moment I was first time. I was feeling that relief when I played with him on the court in the practice. Mm -hmm. And then little by little, I think I was ready to, to, to give him everything because I already get some credits till the first half of the season. So I was ready to give him everything to get him as fast as possible back. Mm -hmm. And of course, I mean, he is an amazing player, but that's something how it was, look, how it was from my perspective. Mm -hmm. I really wanted him to see next to me how it can look yeah. from outside because there was something special inside of him that I was waiting to see and then from that I would say Barca game everything else <laughs> you know system. I asked uh, Sharas about the Panathinaikos team in 2009 where he was with Spanulis, Diamantidis, Nicholas, all the players that uh, they are the ball handlers and I asked him that is it a hard thing to you know uh, to share the ball share the positions it's not hard. If you uh, just divide it, you know, uh, see the, who is the hot hand, then you got to figure out the rest. Uh, because, you know, you, you work with him. But uh, how, I, I will again ask it, ask it like that. How hard to, you know, share this ego, give up the ball to uh, another teammate. I, I believe, yeah, you guys talking about how easy it is. But I know inside, you know, you want to use all the ball maybe some other way, but how do you feel about playing together, sharing that ball uh, in, the, in their positions? No, sir? <laughs> <Yeah. coughs> it starts uh, from you personally. That's, that's the beginning, how you be that, or how you start to sacrifice. Because uh, if you look that bad way, never you're going to win it. Mm -hmm. Especially, we are both young, especially me and him, in the, maybe coming the best age of our careers together along with uh, Kruno who mm. is old by, uh, with age but still young in his mind and he's still hungry especially at that moment also Rodi maybe he has the the, the uh, he is the most quiet guy from all of four of us ball handlers mm -hmm. but three of us and including of course me and him uh, I started like that uh, we had some game and I don't know which game was that. He was really very good. Mm. And before that I was playing very well. And then suddenly you ask yourself, what now? Because mm -hmm. he has that character, he has that uh, body language that he can dominate the game. He is, he, he is strong character. And that was the moment that I realized that I have to stop any jealousy. Like, mm -hmm or whatever, maybe jealousy is a strong word, but any competition with him. Mm -hmm. And then, this is, in English I heard many times this sentence, less is more. Mm -hmm. When you feel free to give something, then things coming back to you mm -hmm. easier. But that moment is hard to, to, to beat inside of yourself. And how I started, it was really simple. In the moment when maybe I feel myself great, on a purpose I start to call for him. Because mm -hmm. most of the time, great. yes, yes. Mm -hmm. When I feel great, on a purpose, I break myself, it sounds like that, but I call for him some mm -hmm. set offense. Mm -hmm. Or also now, after that, when we click, when I feel him hot, I give him all the time ball. Like on the purpose, even I can maybe create, because I feel that he has that momentum and I feel where is he much better than me, maybe transition. Mm -hmm. So that's how I divide that. Nothing special that I can describe, but this is how it started. And when I watch sometimes our games, it really looks so easy how we split the ball yeah. and share the ball. But that's how I win that, that battle inside of me. How do you feel about it, Shane? Um, I mean, similar. You know, you just have to, personally, you have to understand what's best for the team, what's best for you, what's best for whoever you're playing with. Um, and I think, like he said, it was a, a process of playing against each other at practice, not knowing exactly how we could coexist, figuring it out. Then, you know, coach wasn't really giving us minutes together. And mm -hmm. then coach finally saw I had a breakout game and he was like, okay, this guy's having a MVP caliber season. 
this guy just had a, a game that we've expected from him forever. So now we have to find a way to kind of let them both work while out there on the court. And um, I mean, it's at this point, I would say it's very easy. easy. There'll be times in the game where <laughs> I'll be taking the ball out or he'll go to take it out. I'll be like, All right, I'm tired. You can take it. You take it. Or he'll be tired. And he say, go get the ball. Go get the ball. <laughs> so there's moments where it's just like now we kind of just understand each other's space. We understand how we can be successful together. And, um, you know, I'm not I'm not a huge ego guy. Uh, I just want to win. At the end of the day, I want responsibility. I want to be a part of something special. I want to have a reason or a, uh, a role in winning games or losing games. I want to be a part of it. I want to have a responsibility. But at the end of the day, it's all about winning. So I've said it for years. It doesn't matter if I have two points, 10 points, 30 points, five points, as long as we're successful as a team and we're winning. That's all that matters. And when you have those kind of characters and you share characters like that with like Vasa, who, you know, he wants to be responsible. He wants to have the ball. He wants to be, you know, a reason why we're being successful. When you have similar characteristics like that, it just makes it easy because uh, we both want to win at the end of the day. And you guys became the best duo, uh, best backcourt back court duo of the EuroLeague. And now uh, let's fast forward to the final four that you guys had. Uh, in the first team meeting, I guess, there was a surprise for you that winning the uh, MVP of the season. And, you know, first to congratulate you was Shane, right he was sitting right behind of you. That was the moment that touched our heart, you know. Maybe it's a simple thing for most of the people, but when I saw him, because he was the uh, king without a crown uh, a year ago, he was the MVP yes. uh, without a question. And now you are winning it. And he is the first to congratulate you. This is the all the thing that we are talking about. This is the point that we came in the, in the end of the season. How did you feel when that surprise happened to you? Because I know you had very difficult time of your life during that span. And now in the end, and you won it. Won the final four. Uh, won the MVP of the season. How did it feel? First of all, I was really surprised when 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 this all happened. But also, I remember that he was the first one who who grabbed me from back, mm -hmm. from behind. I, I was looking down. Uh, and I also heard his voice. He was like, oh, wow, something like that, he said. <laughs> it's, it's big thing. St stuff like that, he said, because I was... Nobody knew, right? Nobody uh, knew that th th that was the uh, price. Nobody, really. I mean, me personally, not at all. <laughs> but about that award, as you said, Last year, for sure, he won that. And uh, in, from, my, from my point of view, I don't chase things. Mm -hmm. I really don't chase things, and I'm not forcing anything. It's similar for the game style, too. Of course, when you are building something, you are making mistakes because sometimes you did something unnecessary, some mistakes, because you are, you are willing to do that so much and you have big desire then. After a while, when you reach things, then you understand this is just a simple thing. And that's how you build confidence and with experience, you, you put yourself in calm position more and more. Uh, about MVP, honestly, I expected that it's going to be Mirotic because logically, with, in, in the past, the, most of the time MVP was the guy from the first team mm -hmm. of regular season who had a good seasons individually. And... Uh, the only hope for me was maybe because I know they started to, to, to mention my name when they include opinion from captains, coaches, and I don't mm -hmm. know who else. To maybe the there was a chance because I know I know I knew that I play better play of the Mirotic. Yeah. But still, honestly, I didn't expect. I was even sleeping before that, <laughs> and Osgur called me two times. Come on, man, we are waiting for you. Where are you? I said, Sleeping. And I came in three flops. <laughs> so I was like, at least you could tell me to put shoes <laughs> on. And the surprise was really good. And uh, I, I'm very happy because uh, uh, this award came, I believe, the most, the biggest reason is my consistency mm -hmm. during this year. Uh, I didn't have numbers like he had last year, 25 average, 23, 45, breaks uh, and recalls, uh, and <laughs> everything. But I was consistent. Uh, my team, uh, with all of them, was something that make a good uh, run at, in the second in the second uh, part of the season, and all together, I think I deserved. But uh, I was more happy because I didn't expect, mm -hmm. and then that's why I was more uh, really, really surprised and happy. 
And of course, this is something that I always like to say. I dedicate this to, to my mother because yeah. everything started with, uh, with her and father and sister. And this is this is good part of, of life. Yeah. And Shane, how did you feel when these awards came to your teammate that you uh, share with the background with him? Uh, how did you feel in your side? Uh, it felt good. Um, you know, we all see how hard he works. He's one of the first guys to be in the gym with lifting weights. He's the mm -hmm. last one to leave the gym getting extra shots up. You see how committed he is to the game of basketball, always studying, always you know, trying to get better and become the best version of himself. Um, so to see the growth um, of him from year one to now year three being the MVP of everything you can imagine, um, it, it feels good. It feels good to share a backcourt with the MVP. It feels good to, to be somebody that was a part of the journey to see him, you know, grow into who he is now, which is, you know, the best point guard. So. Um, This was a really good feeling to see him get that award. Uh, you could tell he was shocked. Uh, you know, he can always say something, but he really just was sitting there speechless. Um, so it was, it was good. It was a good moment for our team. It started um, like a positive energy for us in the, in the beginning of the Final Four, and mm -hmm. it, you know, carried us all the way through. So um, you know, it was a really happy moment. Because, you know, you add something to him. And maybe you add something to him. Maybe you, uh, yes, you are the two separate characters on the court, two playing different kind of. You uh, like to play five on five. He's very good on transition, like that. But is there anything that you guys learn from e each other? You know, characteristics. Maybe the <laughs> something. Yes. Uh, we got we got the same shot going to the right now. <laughs> the, the hop to the <laughs> the one two. That's what we share now. <laughs> But yeah, for sure. Uh, sorry. No, you got, got to go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> no, so what I, I was about to say was that the biggest problem for me that I deserved that victory w was actually uh, the happiness of teammates. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can't lie to them. You are all day with them for three years. It's for sure something that you can't hide. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Uh, I always try to be honest to everyone at, as much as I can so they know what to expect from me on the court, off the court. So when, did, when that happened, I just felt that everybody was happy about that. That was something very nice mm -hmm. for me to feel. Because from your close people and your family and your teammates, if you feel that energy, then it's enough mm -hmm. like, to, to, to feel happy about it. Specifically about the game, yeah, I learned definitely it was uh, last year when he was shooting crazy, this percentage. like. 80% for three, <laughs> especially for this right, mm. right uh, dribbling or right uh, entering to the shot mm -hmm. from the right side. And it was this Corona time and I stayed in Istanbul for three months. Mm -hmm. And right before season ended, I asked him for, for the advice because I was shocked because in Serbia we don't learn that, mm. that way, how to shoot from that dribble. And I asked him what's the secret and he showed me and then I started. Three months Shooting I was working in the gym in Merter, and so now I started to, to, to use that shot, not the same way as him, but for me it's as best as I can, <laughs> so for sure I learned a lot from him. And the shots begin to fall in the final four. You know, Cheska game is, is a very physical game. Uh, you got your fifth foul in the end, uh, and everything was on the hands of Shane. Uh, and maybe the uh, the way you win the game was not like we used to. You know, the, the three pointers they go into the basket, not like that. But the rebound that you get from the, the possession, uh, the free throw that's in the very tense moment. So. How do you guys remember in the end of the Cheska game? First, let's begin uh, with you, Shay. You played that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, Cheska game was a weird game for me <laughs> altogether. Um, didn't play the whole first quarter. Um, Vasa and Roddy were doing really well out there, so coach decided to sit me the whole first quarter. Um, got out there in the second quarter, played pretty well. Um, then third quarter came around, pretty much sat the whole third quarter as well. And then I don't know, you have to ask coach, he just kept pulling me in and out of the lineup. So I didn't really feel like I had a good rhythm. Mm -hmm. I didn't really feel like I had um, a feel for the ball, a sense for the flow of the game, the energy of the game. Um, but like I said, it's never been about me. Uh, I just want to be out there, help compete. Um, but they had it going, they were up 20. So, you know, I was just over there. And then 
this guy having an unbelievable game just decides to start hacking everybody. <laughs> he vows out, and now I have no rhythm. I haven't dribbled in like 20 minutes, and I'm like, all right, now, now I got to go figure out how I'm, I'm going to try to, you know, figure this out. But, um, you know, teammates were big. Kruno was big at the end of that game. Roddy made some huge shots. Yeah. We got some big stops. Um, and, yeah, like, like I said in all the interviews going into the Final Four, it's going to be about the little things. Um, yeah. And that rebound was just a little thing that the ball literally came right to me. And I was like, it was me or Ukoff. And I was like, I have to be able to out-jump this guy. So <laughs> you I jumped really out. <laughs> yeah, just jumped in and, you know, tried to get that rebound to, to seal the game. Yeah, how does it feel on your side? I felt at the beginning very well physically. And I felt like I was the fastest in my life in the game. <laughs> but that was a tricky moment because I got tired so fast. <laughs> I didn't save anything for it for the end of the game, but uh, one more lesson that I tried to use in the final, and I think I used it pretty, pretty well, but uh, I, I, I knew how he felt. Even after uh, half time, I heard what he said to Jakub, and I also came to him. I said, like, put him earlier, because mm -hmm. he needs it, and he needs to feel the game. He needs to feel the touch of the ball. But I'm not a coach, so they, they, they're making decisions. Uh, but it was not easy, but at the same time I was really calm while I was sitting. Because I remember Dogush was behind me, he was running all the time. I was telling him, come on and sit down, <laughs> I need some peace. Because <laughs> you're putting so much tension around me. Because he was very hard for, for watching that game. But uh, all these three years was maybe very important for this la for these three minutes actually because when you sit on the bench and you know who is on the court mm -hmm. you can feel relaxed i really felt relaxed mm -hmm. i was not so relaxed because i don't even even follow results generally but i was relaxed while while i was watching them because i know i knew exactly how much they are fighting for everything mm -hmm. i know that he will not give up for sure Kruno, of course roddy was in good momentum and all other guys too, so it was tough, but very, very happy. And that game was exactly the team won. Yeah, and you know the experience came through the years, but I believe Coach Ataman has the experience of that game because he is telling us that he had a meeting with you, Shane, uh, before the final game about starting you. Uh, how was that uh, meeting with him and your starting game? Um, I mean, he basically told me he wanted me to forget the semifinal. Um, he said, you know, we, me and him got into it in the semifinal. Yeah. You know, he screamed at me for something. I screamed back. Yeah. Um, but he just wanted to forget everything. He was like, you've played well against Barcelona over the last few years. Um, this is the biggest game on the biggest stage against, you know, a team that you've played really well against. So uh, we're going to start you in this game. Just try to forget whatever was going on in the in the semifinals and just come out, be aggressive, play your game, and um, we're gonna win. So that was basically it. Uh, it wasn't a long meeting; it was a couple minutes, but basically just trying to move past that moment that we had or that disagreement or whatever you want to call it. Just try to move past that and put all the focus and the um, positive energy towards winning the championship game, and, and that was really it. And you felt better, right, when you start the game? You feel yeah. the ball uh, more. I think everybody right? feels, as a basketball player, you want to start. Yeah. Like every basketball player you ask, do you prefer to come off the bench or do you prefer to start? start. Every single one of them is going to tell you they want to start because you just finished warming up. You just got your shots up. You mm -hmm. just were dribbling, doing your stretching, doing all these things. So you want to get right out there and get right to it while you have some type of feeling. Um, so definitely everybody, I would say, prefers to start. And it was definitely, I think, better for me to start in that, in that final game so that I could... Even though I didn't start the game well, I was out there, I was moving, mm -hmm. I was, you know, staying warm, staying connected with the game, the feel, the flow um, of everything. So um, I think it definitely helped me play better in the final to be able to start. Did you feel Shane was feeling better on the court? <clears throat> About him, I mentioned a couple of times uh, in some interviews that that was something that I was listening many times while I was in Jalgiris, that Sharas was saying, Oh, in Europe, there is no player who can click, like, let's say, Harden or stuff mm -hmm. like that. Because we have to be always, uh, uh, how he said, like, we have to be always good student and solid. Mm -hmm. He doesn't like to give so much 
uh, unnecessary freedom, especially if you are not the main guy. But I remember when I signed here and after that Barca game that he played, I, I first time felt that somebody who has not so much intense to practice has such a big confidence on the game. Mm -hmm. So he has that click. <laughs> like uh, he he's maybe one, I don't know who else maybe usually has that, but I think the only one who has that click that after maybe terrible game, terrible feeling, terrible weather, whatever, mm -hmm. practice before, body, body, some hurts, whatever, he can be ready for the game to, to score 30. Mm -hmm. For me, I need to feel yeah. all week good. I'm trying to learn that. I'm trying to, to be independent from this practice routine, uh, uh, body feeling mm -hmm. or something like that, because I see that it's possible. Of course, we are not similar, but it's, it's good to try to believe that even if you feel some pain or hurts, or you are not in a good shape, you are capable of, of having a good game. And for him, I never honestly think about that. Even many th times he starts off the bench during the EuroLeague season, because I think coach likes to get something out of Rodi mm -hmm. in the beginning, giving me rhythm to come. He said he, he is better than me starting off the bench, I would mm -hmm. say. But for the final game, of course, and I was also expecting for the final game, uh, semi-final, same that he would start because mm -hmm. this is like end of the season. But for Barca, even after Ceska game for Barca, I was not even doubting that he will have a good game or if he's going to ha have good rhythm. So I felt that he's aggressive. I like to see him aggressive. I like to see him. For me, the best momentum that I feel him that he is inside of game when he play defense. Because mm. it's not easy. But when I see him hungry in defense, that then I, I don't even think about that. I will come to the final game, but was I mentioned something great, the click. How do you, how, how do you describe that? Because you know you maybe feel unhappy in the at the moment, but you just click, and then you score 30 points. No one can do that, as you, as Charles mentioned, yes, as you mentioned. Yes. How do you do that? Um, I battle with a lot of things in my mind. Yeah. Um, good things and everything, negative things, positive things, but there's a a certain space that I try to enter into um, and to kind of just clear everything out mm -hmm. and just don't think about anything too much, don't think about the negative, don't think about your body, don't think about these five shots you just missed, the turnovers you just had and just go trust the work and the person that you've become, all the work that you've put in for the 20 years that I've been playing basketball to trust myself and that's kind of where the click comes is you just clear your mind of whatever's going on pain, bad shooting field goals, percentage, uh, arguments with coach, uh, something going on off the court. You know, you just kind of enter this, I would call it peace. Like mm -hmm. I enter this peace of space in my mind. Wow. And it just allows me, it gives me the freedom to go out there and play. And at the end of the day, I don't want to be a person who, when I get off the court, I say, damn, I wish I would have done this. Mm. Or I regret not doing that. But... I enter that space, I kind of let everything go, I go out there, I try, I do my best, I play hard and I live with the results. So it's just kind of like entering that space in your mind that you don't think too much about all the other unnecessary things. You just, you know, go out there and trust everything that you've done and built and kind of just, it works for me. It's so hard to do that. <laughs> for yeah. any human being, yeah. it's a hard thing to do, but you know, uh, you came very, uh, you uh, did so much in your career, so adversities that you gone up to. Uh, but let's go to the final game. In the third quarter, uh, I saw the Shane going to the basket, taking that context, and I see that, uh, I felt that from here, we could be there with you guys, but I felt it from, yes, Shane is feeling well, and now everything will be uh, settled, and I believe that the cup will be ours, because he was feeling it. As you mentioned, he was feeling from the defense. He was he. Uh, you took ten fouls, right, and eight to you, and it was a very physical, very uh, match that you were, they were hitting you all the time. But you were you were feeling it, right? So how do you describe? It? Especially in the second half, you were going to the basket. You take that two, two dribbles, uh, two step shots. You were feeling very good. We can sense that from here. So how did you feel on your side? Uh, I was feeling good. Um, you know, I played. A lot of minutes in the first half. First quarter was wasn't wasn't good. Second quarter, I uh, started being more aggressive and just trying to get to the basket. I knew they were in the bonus, 
So I just tried mm -hmm. to, every time I caught it, I tried to drive because yeah. I knew they had, they were trying to put bigger guys on me, on bigger guys on him, like yeah. Clavier guarding him, yeah. trying yeah, to put so Abrines on me yeah. or, you know, Corey Higgins or, you know, Bomaro, guys that are bigger and not as quick as me. Yeah. So I just tried to be aggressive and, and use my speed as my advantage um, and get to the foul line. And then, you know, you see foul line shots are easy. So yeah. you see those go in the basket, you start feeling good. Um, so yeah, I just I just had a feeling for the game. I had a feeling for the flow of things. Um, then he started playing really well in the third quarter as well. Got some threes and one three. Got to the basket two times in a row. Um, then I hit a three, and I think we kind of just felt that momentum. We felt that um, that that level that we had during that 10-11 game winning spree this year, where mm -hmm. it was just like it could be somebody different on most nights. Most nights it was him. But, you know, if somebody can, Roddy can pop off for 30 or somebody can pop off and have a great game, say touch, you know. Um, but it just felt like, like, I never had a feeling like we were going to lose that game. Like, I always felt like we were going to win. I felt positive. I felt good. My body felt good. The momentum, how the game was going, it felt like it was always in our favor. So um, it just was, a, I think, you know, a good a sense of energy, mm -hmm. intensity and all that uh, that was, was on our side. Yeah, yeah the in energy he was talking about is... We can sense it from here, from the kilometers away. Uh, how did you feel about this? The things going well, energy is high, momentum is on your side. How did you feel on your side? Mm. I think I started a little bit unnecessarily slowly because uh, they put Claver on me and I, mm -hmm. I knew what, what to expect. And I, of course, I played for Sharas. I knew what kind of strategy he prepared for, for his team. And most of the things that he insists is that, that physicality. He always mentioned that even in, in interviews that he likes to put that physicality on, especially in defense, on the main players. So for me, I think I started just uh, with some unnecessary mistakes that instead of he said good things before, just feeling the game, I started to think twice. Mm. Like instead of taking first step back, I make another crossover, another crossover, another, and, and the good thing about everything is that when you get your credits with the coach, from the coach, then you can get back on track because you, you just have to stop thinking, mm -hmm. just have to feel, feel the game. And that's what happened actually in the second, second half. But one very important thing for me was, even we were down by 10, I remember on the court was him, Rodi, Kruno, Tibor and Chris, I think, oh, no, Momo. Mm -hmm, yes, and they get back our game in the rhythm. Yeah, they brought energy. They stole some easy balls. They make good stops. Some unsportsmanlike foul, mm -hmm. and that was, I think, for me, the most important moment. That I felt that Barca stopped. They have no idea how to attack us mm. because the way we respond in defense was actually the main thing for Sharas to understand that we are here. Because mm -hmm. the way they started, it was from outside that we have no rhythm. We have no answer for their tough defense. We have no, uh, re uh, we have too big respect for their strategy, for their some things that everybody knows. Then at that moment when they, when they uh, decrease that ad advantage or we started to lead, I felt that this is the moment to put the gas and, and, and no stop. And in the end of the game, you know, there's a picture, you guys were the champions, but you guys hugging each other, that, that was something for me. Because, you know, I shared that on my Twitter also, because when I see you guys hugging like that, you know, I, there was an interview that I believe they asked you, who, who will you be hugging in the, in the, uh, when you win the championship? You said your girlfriend, right? It was like... <laughs> you look similar. <laughs> so, you know... The game ended, and how did you feel, you know, guys? That hug was telling everything, you know, but let's describe that moment. How did you, how did you feel about it, that, that moment? Um, I think it was just like the most pure form of happiness that you could possibly have on a basketball court. Um, you know, he's, he's a star player on the team. I'm a star player on the team. He had a good game. I had a good game, and it's like... We've been chasing this for so long as a, as a unit, as a team. And, you know, for us to have the biggest responsibilities, I think in that moment when that championship was pretty much solidified, well, it definitely was solidified, um, 
he was running like this. You know, I, I got the last rebound, I threw the ball up in the air, and then I saw him hit the turn like this. And then we kind of just made eye contact, and it was just like, there was no, you weren't thinking, it was just like, whatever you felt, it just kind of mm. just happened, you know? And it was just like, pure happiness. And I was just hugging him, telling him how proud I am of him. I was, and so happy that we did this. And, you know, it was, it, it's been a long journey. He, it, it feels kind of fast, like you said earlier, but um, it's been a long journey from losing in that game like, I remember how I felt when we lost that game a few years ago. I remember exactly how I felt sitting there watching Seska, you know, celebrate, doing the champagne, the confetti. And, you know, you have to sit there and watch that. Yeah. And it's like, and we were this close, and then it didn't happen. And then last year, we're having a great year as a team. We're first place by a few games. And we like, we have the feeling and the momentum and everything. And then COVID happens. So then all of that together with how you know all the things happened this season with surgeries and COVID and no fans and all that for everything to come full circle in that moment um, to be there with you know the guy that if we lose it's our fault it's his fault or it's my fault like it's 100 percent you know so you know to you know have that responsibility and to achieve our ultimate goal um, I just think that's how you, what you saw it was just like so happy so proud that we did this together we have you know a huge responsibility here and um and we did it, and I think it just, it all came out in that moment. Yeah. Most of the things he said, uh, and I completely agree, it was one of the best moments in my life so far. Uh, to completely spontaneous, everything, all, all game was unplanned for us, and even better, you know. <clears throat> As also he said, we both had a really good game, so the feelings were higher and higher when we saw these last couple of seconds. I mean, generally, it's the guy who doesn't show so much emotion, but I don't remember myself <laughs> showing, that <laughs> showing that many emotions in a good way or screaming. I was really screaming because there was many reasons. But one very important thing is that, you know, he's American and he, he has that uh, well educated education in America, so he kind of uh, put himself in the situation to learn about other cultures, about Turkey. He speaks some words. Mm -hmm. He likes to feel uh, involved in stuff also about national team inside of Turkey, also about fans, and and he's a little bit untypical American person who who likes to learn about culture. Mm -hmm. But for me. For me, I'm coming from basketball country with a lot of a lot of good European players, uh, with a lot of good big names inside of Euroleague, let's say environment and organization. And watching all these years since I'm he was watching probably NBA when he was young. I was watching Euroleague yeah. five and four. So I remember many details that uh, situation when I was watching these final four competitions and watching all those guys winning these titles, starting from Diamantidis, Teodosic, uh, Spanulis. For me, it was at that moment so far. And all these memories came to one point that finally I'm also one of the guys to win this title. Mm -hmm. Also, I remember when Bogdan won the title, I was in Tofaj, I was in Sina Nerdem in this gym, mm -hmm. in the last row of the gym watching with some <laughs> friend. Didn't even have what good tea good ticket for to, to watch. I didn't even have ticket for final. I was watching just semi-final. And then three years later, I'm the one who is lifting with together with my team that trophy. MVP. Many, many, many trophy, many pictures go through my mind. But the most important is that the first day we collected uh, and came to together to this club and all these three years and winning for, for FS fans, which are not fans of Fenerbahce or Galatasaray, mm -hmm. a huge, huge amount of fans. We have our fans, we have our history of the club, and for us personally, it was really, I'm now shaking while, <laughs> while I'm talking, amazing, really, amazing. What about uh, in the locker room, coach came in here, uh, in the locker room, uh, said that he, he said that, uh, we, I told you guys, we are the best team in the and we win the cup. So how was the locker room? You know, the court that we see, but in the locker room, I believe it's something else. Uh, how was the celebrations in there? The song was great, by the way. 
<laughs> um, I mean, it was I mean, the same emotion that you saw pretty much out there on the court in front of all the cameras. It was just more people being who they were. You just kind of saw everybody let loose. You know, yeah. the people who are the craziest on the team, dancing, screaming, singing songs. So you just, you know, saw everybody's characters come out. You saw everybody in their, you know, purest form of happiness. Just whatever that is, whatever your body does, whatever kind of person you are in that moment, you saw it come out. And um, it was a good feeling, you know, everybody in that locker room has been there pretty much for the three years. Um, we've all felt, you know, all the positives of winning games. and We felt the negatives of losing. Um, so, you know, in that moment, um, you just, it was just, <laughs> Pure happiness, and you just saw everybody first just enjoying everyone. that. Yeah. First, 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 you're exactly. the champions for, for everyone in the club. Exactly. So. Uh, and I saw your post in the Instagram, you know, a couple of pictures, you with the Final Four uh, awards, uh, you celebrating, and the last picture, you and Shane. Yes. I believe there's a meaning in that. Yes, of course. I put also with Krono, but he don't have Instagram. Maybe he has <laughs> fake one. <laughs> he doesn't want to say that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, with experience that I have from the past, I, I really uh, uh, put myself in position that uh, I don't believe that in profession, such a big profession like it's basketball or uh, professional sports world, you can build really friendships because people have big interest inside of mm -hmm. that. And I really had big problem with that when I go to when I went to. Bayern, because I came from Megalex, where we, we were all friends, same age, and suddenly mm -hmm. I'm with players that they have families, they have their own life, and I'm, I was like looking for their attention to give me some mm. hug, to give me some <laughs> energy back, because I really didn't have that mindset of professional person, professional person to, to, to look cold to someone who is my roommate, who is my teammate, and I was... Uh, I grew up with my family that we have to be friendly and open to people. So after that experience, I really turned myself more inside into me. And I was waiting for just natural to happen some friendship with somebody. And this is, I can say, two, three person, five maximum in the last seven years that I built some kind of friendship. Of course, uh, it was uh, Dusko Savanovic, uh, friends from Red Star that They are similar to my age. I would say maybe Sammy Mejia, mm -hmm. Barry Shermi from Tofash, uh, Brandon Davis from, yeah, from Jagiris, Jan Kunas, age difference, but, and then Kruno and him, you know, like, okay, maybe with him not the same as Kruno, but the connection that we really have on the court was something special for mm -hmm. me. I cannot like that, you know. Mm -hmm. And I put that picture because I, I don't care about Instagram. I'm very close to turn off my Instagram, but <laughs> now it was a good momentum and I wanted to show that beside all these trophies, for me, more important, of course, is that I built with him and with Kroon, of course, with all other guys, but I honestly say that with him, that connection, the court, and I hope we will stay friends till our rest of the, our lives, uh, it was meaning of that. You know, of course, we wish you guys to play all your careers here. <laughs> But, you know, some people say it's the last dance of the Andal Defense. Maybe it is, maybe not. We talked to you about this, you know, uh, when we got an interview before the Final Four. You said, just live in the moments. Uh, just enjoy what, what you have right now. Uh, but, you know, people from the NBA would like to have you there. Uh, but what is your perspective? You know, you said when uh, you guys reached the first final, uh, if they, they offer me a, a third position, a point guard position, the third place, you know, I won't uh, answer their calls. Uh, but right now, how are you guys feeling about this? Luca won the final four, uh, the regular season, the final four MVP, and he's gone to uh, NBA. So how, how do you guys feel about this? Um. I mean, I think, you know, in, in the term of NBA, you never know what's going to happen. Um, you know, there's going to be opportunities. You're going to have to make certain decisions based on if you want to take the opportunities or not. Um, but at the end of the day, it's all about, you know, what you want for your career, what you think is best. And I think that's what every individual player has to come down to a certain moment of time when you have to make these decisions. 
and you just got to do what you think is best for you in the moment. Um, I know we have, we've achieved some great things here with the FS over the last two years. It's been, you know, probably the best three years of my career. I really enjoyed it. Um, but, you know, we'll see. That's the best answer I can give you. You never know. Um, so, I mean, we'll just have to see exactly what happens and, you know, what situations occur, what opportunities come around. And that's really the best answer that I could, I could give. How about you, Vosa? First of all, I think I'm better than Luka Doncic. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I don't look at that the way that maybe people look that we, we achieve something similar. I mean, this guy is something special. For, for me, it was good to achieve all these things, to, to feel free about what I can do from my side to offer, I mean, to make an offer for someone if they have an intense intention to to bring me over there. But uh, I already said that and also last summer I spoke to him about similar things because I never been there. Mm -hmm. uh, people from their, from their organization, I have no idea how they look at me. Uh, of course, more and more they, they watch my games, they they are in contact maybe with my agent more and more, but still I feel that there is a space between what they know about me or what they've learned about me or, or what I can give them. Mm. And that's something that makes me feel that uh, with that way I would not like to go there, to, to, to tell them that I'm able to maybe mm. dribble the ball, to shoot the ball, to pass the ball. If they don't like me, I understand. Maybe I'm just not their type of player or maybe they, they don't see me in a certain role over there. I, of course, I'm all completely real, real about myself that I don't ex expect so much, but uh, this to deserve in Europe and on this level was not easy at all. Of course, I keep fighting for, for every year to, to achieve better and better goals and to stay on the level that I'm now, it's not easy. So if they, if they show that, that they're not sure about me, I'm fine with that, to, to, to don't go that way. But if I feel that maybe there are a chance that I can feel happy, because for me the most important is to feel happy about my decision. Mm -hmm. And if I make decision, I go 100% there. So we'll see, I'm still here, I'm still playing for FS and I'm happy. So in the end, you know, the fans were with you in the Final Four, were with you uh, through these celebrations, but uh, you can send your message to them because you know uh, we got so many messages you guys had the most messages from the your fans of course but let's finish with uh, your message to the fans and then we go on. okay first of all I'm very happy that we make proud Turkish people uh, I know that Turkish people are very big fan of sports uh, similar similar character that we are in Serbia also and uh, happy for FS fans that we uh, build with them something very sp special. This will stay remarkable for the entire of our careers and it will stay in the gym forever. Mm -hmm. And uh, I hope they enjoyed watching us. They, they really felt our energy on the court and uh, we'll try to, to make them proud more and more. Um, just want to say that we appreciate the support. Um, you guys weren't able to be with us this season due to COVID uh, in the gyms, in the arenas. Um, but, you know, we definitely still felt your energy. We felt your spirit. We, we felt all your support uh, from a distance. And, um, you know, it's been a long, long journey to get to where we are now. But um, like Vasa said, um, what we just did, what we just accomplished is the first time in, in club history. And, you know, you only can do that once. It only can be the first time once. So at the end of the day, um, this last three years this season winning the championship will go down in history um, and uh, we will forever be that team that brought the first championship here and um, we couldn't have done any of that without you guys support and without feeling all the positive energy that you sent our way all season so thank you guys miss you guys uh, hopefully one day uh, we can all be back in the arena again past this you know whole COVID situation but um, we did it we're champions and um, just really happy and, and proud to be here. Guys, thank you very much for this. Let me congratulate you once again. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much.
Şenin Hakim ve Vasilya Misic'le sezonu konuştuk, şampiyonluğu konuştuk. Şimdilik hoşçakalın. <gülüyor>